Okay, milestone uh, five, the uh, rec uh, the submissions are not open, that's why it's 0 0.9. Um, I'm going to uh, open it up and I'm going to, uh, this semester I'm doing a new way of submission. Uh, I'll, I'll go through it when I explain exactly what how the milestone works. So for milestone five, what you do, you essentially get uh, uh, all the files, everything that you developed, and you bring milestone two into your application and your and complete your milestone two functionalities to uh, complete your project. As simple as that. So you're essentially going to use every single thing that you had in there and. Uh, um, and um, uh, every single function that you had as a mock-up in your milestone two, you're gonna uh, fill each function with uh, logic. You're gonna add few attributes too, of course, but we'll see. Anyways, publication selector module is uh, uh, a module, a collection that I created. It's a menu that we, you'll assume another developer has developed for you, and this. Uh, uh, um, um, let me just bring it up. It's easier to actually show it to you. So the publication selector is uh, uh, a, a class that whose job is to actually receive publications, show them all to the user, and then ask user to select one. Okay, as simple as that. So. Uh, with a with publication selector, you literally uh, uh, can collect all the uh, search results that you have. So you look for something in the publications, and using the insertion operator, I provided two different versions of it. Either you can add a publication by address or by reference. It doesn't make any difference. Any way you insert it, it's going to accept it and insert it. Uh, it's not going to make a copy of a publication. It only keeps the address of the publication, which means if you, um, uh, for example, have an array of publications, and you will, if you have an array of publications, so these are the publications arrays that you read from the file, all of it, um, and then you have a publication selector, so you go through every single element of the array, so these are, let's say, these are the publications one by one that you have in the array, and uh, you search for it and you want, for example, this one, this one, and this one, and this one to be selected, to be shown to the user so the user can select one of these four. What you do as you are searching through it, when the condition is met, you insert this one into your publication selector. So essentially, publication selector is a very small little, sorry, not like that, Publication selector is a very narrow little thing like this that only has some pointers in them. So essentially, if you selected four, it's going to actually add four pointers over here. And these four pointers are going to point to those selections like that. And when you tell to the publication selector to run, it's going to go to those addresses and display those publications to the user and with a row number so user can select one of them and when it selects it returns the library reference of that publication and because library reference is a unique number with that you can actually recognize which record it is and what you want to do with it so that's how it works out so this is essentially your publication selector and this is the array that you loaded from the from the from the file and the operate the insertion operator does the uh, uh, insertion for you. Uh, we create I created for f as a sample I created uh, uh, a f uh, I created uh, uh, a program to show you how publication selector works over there. So um, uh, essentially, what I'm doing in here uh, is uh, uh, I'm opening the, the file stream, I'm reading up to 3,000 publications, and I'm putting them all one by one. Look at this logic, you're going to need it for your, uh, 
for your program. So essentially, this is how you're going to do it. So you read the first character, then you ignore, then based on the first character that you read, if it's a publication, you create an instance of publication, otherwise a book, and uh, put them all in the file, and it goes through it one by one. So uh, your array over here will be an array of all these things. Now, for example, if I want to check to see <clears throat> which one of these things are a match for Harry or Money Sense and get them all and show it. What I will do over here is this. I'm going to, uh, how did I do it over here? There you go. So I'm going to go through them one by one. If uh, Harry is in the title of the publication or Money Sense is in the title of the publication, I'll use this operator to insert it into the uh, publication selector. Uh, which is this one. Uh, there you go. And this is the title of the publication selector. <clears throat> and that's how it works. Simple and straightforward. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Um, that is that. So, publication selector is essentially where you're going to uh, have all your uh, search results for the user to to look at it uh, walk through this execute it walk through it see how it works uh, it's very simple and straightforward then you get your lib app module uh, do you have any questions about publication selector <clears throat> yes Brian Brian go ahead Brian, you said you have a question. I'm not hearing you. Oh, you don't have, you don't have audio. Let's wait for Brian to reset its audio. Okay. C can you hear me, Professor? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and before you begin, I forgot to mention one thing. The second argument that you see over here is the page size which which means it shows five at a time and user can go previous page place page so if you have 500 things that you want to show it's going to show five at a time so you can change the size of the page based on what we have but by default we set it to 15. go ahead brian okay professor in in this um header file line 18 mm -hmm. so you are using a pointer pointer should we do the same? No, no, no. This is just me. You don't do such a thing. This is me. This is a thing that you you don't know a uh, pointer to a pointer. And that's why we mentioned that uh, that's why you have this. Uh, and you have, uh, that's why, thank you for the question, actually. That is why you have STDS library capacity. Instead of creating a pointer to a pointer, you create an array of pointers to the size of SDS library capacity, and it cannot grow more than that. Got it? So essentially, what you are going to create will be something. Yeah, so it's going to be something like this. This is for, so let's save this just a second. So 01WS. 10 and in here uh, workshop 10 what did we talk about uh, uh, having templated class as an argument cpp so that's that one so what you're going to have in your uh, class whatever your class is so class lib app You are going to have a, a publication. I think it's publication pointer I mentioned, right? No, I yeah, think publication it's pointers. Yeah, publication pointers. So, so you're going to okay. have publication pointers, whatever the name. I don't know, um, pubs, whatever. And then you put over here SDDS uh, library capacity library capacity whatever the, the thing is so like this you're going to have these many pointers and the number of publications in the library cannot exceed that 
okay you gotta actually have to show an error message for that a specific error message for that okay uh, is that clear now yes professor okay the reason the reason that i had pointer to pointer over there as you mentioned is that i wanted my array of pointers to be dynamic you don't know that yet that's op345 but you don't need to know it because you just have the class and you want to use it so all you need to know about your uh, public uh, for your publication selector is that it gets a title it gets a page size um, and it cannot get copied or uh, uh, assigned to another one and that's it and you insert something into it like this and uh, um, you can check to see if the publication selector is empty which means the searcher is already turned nothing so if if that's false it means that no matches were found uh, reset simply resets everything back to, and empties the publication selector to, to start it for a new search if you need it sort sort the selections based on date and then the title and run displays it and as it's exactly like the menu that you created but it's with publication selectors it's exactly like your menu but with publication selectors and sort sort okay so keep that in mind so yeah so uh, for your uh, libapp module you create a <clears throat> pointers array uh, you create a number to know how many actually publications were actually uh, fed into this thing uh, <clears throat> you got to create one integer number in there and it's called last library reference number we want a, a unique library reference number created for each publication that is being added to do that we started for the begin at a, a number that we started whatever the number was um, let me just take a look at it actually uh, if we look at for example the data file that I gave you and this is the data file that you are going to use for your testers if you look at it these are the numbers that we have and this is the last one so when you are loading this file this is going to be the last number that you're going to hold in that integer that is one three 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 whatever it is going to be so the last number that you receive you're going to put it in that integer va number that is called last library reference number at any time you are adding a new publication you add one to this number and that becomes the library reference number for the new publication therefore each publication will have uh, a unique number that is the added to the last one that we had and you keep going like that do we understand what is that for all right you will add one more menu to your publication you already had two you had an exit menu and a main menu you add one more that is a type menu which is going to show two things book or publication so user can select one for book two for publication so using that menu you can ask the user if the thing they want to use is either a book or a publication so that menu you have to add to it you have already added two menus to your uh, library uh, app you can you add one more <clears throat> method implementation the load so what happens what load is doing is going to actually get uh, go through the, uh, the the file one by one read one character from the file see what is the record that is coming either a publication or a, uh, a book instantiate a dynamic uh, variable uh, a dynamic uh, book um, or a publication and then read it from a file if it if what it reads is a p it creates a publication reads a publication then automatically it's going to read the rest obviously you're going to skip the tab uh, or if it's a B then you skip the tab you instantiate a book and you read the book therefore it reads the book and you keep doing that loop one by one and add it to the uh, to the array uh, pointer array that we that you had up there so to the uh, publication pointers array you're gonna add it one by one to that one and you're gonna uh, add to the number of loaded publications as you are going through it so at the end you know actually how many are added 
uh, to the uh, to the publication. Uh, so that's it. Until uh, IF, IF stream fails or you reach the maximum number of things, I did not mention that over there. But you should not exceed the maximum number. That's a given thing. You should not uh, bypass the maximum number of uh, uh, publications that you have. It's the capacity of the library. So that's load. So save method, how it works. Save method uh, goes through every single element that you have. Uh, you don't need to do anything because they're all virtual and when you are actually writing one into the file automatically it's going to select the proper write method. So there is no need for you to check what is the type. The only thing that you need to check in each publication is the library reference number. Because the way we delete the library reference number, uh, a publication from library is essentially we set its library reference number to zero. That's all you do. You don't actually delete it from the array. So what you do when it's being saved, it checks the library reference number. If the library reference number is non-zero, it saves it in the file. If it's not, it just skips it and goes to the next one. So you write a loop from the beginning of the array, you go to the end of the array to the number of loaded publications, and if the library reference number is not zero, you save it. And that's your save function. Easy breezy. Search. You need to add an argument to your search function of the library application you created. I don't know how you want to do it. It's your choice. Do it any way you want it. Add one argument, two argument, three, whatever you need to do. I don't know how you want to design it, but add an argument so you can call the search in three different ways. First, search all and everything. So which means this search is going to search everything, publications and books. That's type one. Type two is to search only on publications and not books. So if it's a book, it's not going to even look at it. Okay. And the third one only, uh, oh, sorry, uh, my apologies, not books. My apologies. Backtrack. Search on all publications. Number two, search only on publications. Uh, so uh, again, search all I made. I said it wrong. Forget about it. Reset. Let's start from the beginning. So search number one, search on searches on all publication, no checking. Number two, searches on publications who are uh, uh, which are on loan. So the sub publications who are out of the library, we gave it to a member function, to, to a member. So those are the, they are being checked. And the third one, search only on the ones that are not on loan and they are in a library. So we can do three different types of search. Search on all publications, search on publications who are only on, uh, uh, on loan, or the publications that are uh, in the library and they are not on loan. And how does the search work? It uh, uh, searches the title. So your search uh, will uh, ask for a title. It receives a title from the from the user. And then you, you get that title and you go through the search depending on search or how search is called. You compare the title. If the, the, the title the user entered is inside is inside the title. So if the title of the publication contains what the user entered, you insert that one into publication selector. As simple as that. And you go through it one by one and you do it all to the end. So if the matches are found, then you sort the result and you get the user selection. Um, otherwise you print no matches found. Okay. And then if the user uh, selects a board, you got to print a board at the end. So uh, let me just double check to make sure that I actually uh, mentioned it properly. I am actually going to the... Yeah, so at the end, your search will go into return the library reference. If it's, uh, if it's actually successful at the end, it... Uh, uh, returns the yeah it returns the uh, uh, library reference of the selected item not the row so it so user selects five and then you return the library reference of the fifth selection of the user uh, in there and that's that 
So, uh, which actually, uh, what that's what the publication selector does for you. So you don't need to worry about it. Publication selector automatically returns the library reference and nothing but that. So search will do that for you. <clears throat> okay. So it actually shows over here an example. So, uh, um, like what happens if the user aborts? So if um, when the search is happening, you receive the title, you ask, so book or publication, and if user says zero, you say abort, uh, or uh, you, you ask the user book or publication, user selects which one, and then uh, you're going to uh, get a title, and user says Harry, so it looks for Harry in all books. Um, or if it, a user selects publication, then it's going to uh, select for all the publication title in all the publications for that one and returns it and will be done. So simple and straightforward. Search on loan. So if it is search on loan, when you, for example, searching for a book and it's Harry, it only it, it, these are only whose library member member IDs are set, which means they are all actually on loan. And if uh, uh, it is... Uh, again book but these ones are not on loan uh, these are the ones that the member IDs are not uh, not applicable which means they are not on loan because that because of that the uh, member ID is not set so that's how the search works any question about the search <clears throat> Taiba go ahead um, sorry but I just Still confused. How can we uh, we call the search? Um, what when so the search function is called it with only so you call the search function telling to search function what you want to search into. So the through the argument list of search, you receive mm -hmm. either I'm searching everything, or on loans or not on loans. So these are the three things. This is the message that search receives through the argument list. Do we understand this now? So it, wait, it wait, will wait, be wait, like wait. the wait, menu. Wait, 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 wait. So when search function begins, it knows if it's searching everything or on loans or the ones that are in library. Are we okay with this? Then mm -hmm. after the search starts searching, Okay, it asks the user for two information. Am I searching for book or a publication? Mm -hmm. After yeah. getting that information, it asks what the title is supposed to be. So your search should do, is it everything? So when you are doing your condition, your condition should check to see if it's on loan everything or not on loan, then search mm -hmm. to see if it's book, then it search to see if the title matches or not. And if all these conditions match, then it puts it in the selection se uh, publication selector. Yeah, I got that uh, mm. when we search for title <clears throat> or its publication or book. Mm. But uh, uh, the type of searching is it uh, decided before we call the search method or no? Inside? No, it's inside the search method. The oh. only information that search method is receiving if it is all on loan or not on loan. The rest, the search of the search method should ask itself. That's mm -hmm. why I'm doing it like this. It starts from here. So that's how your search begins. Choose type of publication, your search mm -hmm. method is running. Okay? Yeah. And in here, to, same too. Take a look. So this is a search on loan. So again, it searches what, then it mm -hmm. asks for the title, then it shows what the outcome is. Got it? Yeah. Yeah, that's because I I didn't see the the tester uh, CPB files. So oh yeah 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 so yeah, yeah. Used, yeah yeah so that's why how it's good. So the so your search method that you had now should return an integer and receive type of argument that you want. I don't know how you want to implement it. Okay, okay. it definitely returns an integer that is the uh, library reference number. Uh, yeah. Or it is, uh, uh, um, and it receives something in the argument list to tell to the search fun to to the search method what are the three types of search that it's doing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> You're welcome. Okay. You create a function called get pub. 
what is get publication essentially it receives a library reference and it goes through all the publications and that you have in a library and sees if the publication reference is a match and it returns it easy and uh, and if it's if it cannot find it it returns null okay so go through every single element in the uh, publication pointers array see the li uh, check the library reference if the library reference is a match to this one you return that address that you just found out through the pointers if you couldn't find anything you return null easy new publication method it prints adding new publication to the library gets the publication type from the user book or publication uh, then uh, it creates a dynamic publication based on the user selection so if user wanted publication it instantiates a publication otherwise instantiates a book gets that value from cn so automatically it's going to get it the way it's supposed to do if it fails you flush the keyboard print a port and then go out if the CN is okay then you're gonna add that one to the library but you're gonna ask the user would you like to add this user still have a chance to abort it <clears throat> if the user confirms then you're going to uh, uh, add it to the uh, library and add to the number of uh, uh, publications in our library and, and print publications added if uh, the publication object that you are receiving is not valid you can always check it because the boolean operator is overloaded then you say uh, you're going to say fail to add publication also at the beginning of the function before everything begins you check to see if you have enough space so when i'm doing the tester i'm going to ask you to change the stds library capacity to probably 334 or something like that or 333 so i i can check to see if that works or not so that's new publication uh, and this is the sample for it so um, essentially this is the menu you select one then you select the type and then you select what you want to add it's a book so it receives the uh, location uh, what is the name of the book what is the date so this is actually a publication not a book sorry so it doesn't get the author so uh, location uh, shelf number uh, title date Add this to the library, yes, and it's going to be added to the library. How does remove publication work? <clears throat> so, um, so when you actually say remove, you select remove, you're going to ask what is the type, then you ask for a title. You search through everything, find all the things that contain that late that title, and they are in the same category that you have over here. Um, so you search all of it so in here when you're calling the search in here you're gonna call the search function that you just created but in here you're gonna search in everything that you have loan or not loan it doesn't matter because you want to remove a lib uh, publication from library so you check what you what it has and you go through all of them it displays all of them uh, either book or publication and then user can select either X to exit or select and uh, that's going to show what the selection is and it's going to remove the player and then you set the publication reference to zero and it is deleted you say publication removed so by setting the publication record of what user selected to zero you're essentially deleting it why because when the end comes when it saves it uh, it's going to save the public it's not going to save it in a file anymore therefore it's going to be removed uh, but remember that uh, all these things can be aborted and when you are actually doing this you have to make sure that you set the changed uh, changed uh, flag to true so your save knows that uh, at the end it has to actually uh, confirm the the changing and stuff uh, check out publication uh, so um, again you search for a publication um, you try to find it, user selects it, and then you ask for a membership, and you set the membership number of that publication to the value, uh, and you're, you're checking it out. Obviously, when checked out is called, search only will be searching through the publications that are in the library and not on loan ones. That's why you can call the search right now with only the ones that are in the library and not on loan. <clears throat> 
to return publication it's exactly the same thing at checkout but the difference is that now you're going to search on all the things that are on loan so you're going to search for all of them and as soon as you find it you set the membership to zero it's considered that is returned so it essentially shows all the things that are returned there is one thing when checkout that you have to re re check <clears throat> to make sure that uh, uh, the uh, uh, book that is returning the date that is returning is not more than 15 days if it is more than 15 days you have to calculate to see how many days multiply that by 50 cents and that's their penalty so this book was late for eight days so there are four dollars penalty for it so you're going to print that one please pay four dollars penalty for being eight days late and then you return the library so that's the that's the checkout that's the check-in uh, or returning. <clears throat> the constructor initializes the, the public menu as I mentioned up there so so we know how it is and uh, uh, you have to add an argument to receive the file name so you know what is the data file name that you have and you set that one so that's the constructor and the rest are the sample comp execution everything that I'm gonna put over there so down to this point do you know what you need to implement so are we okay with the implementation I'm gonna explain how the testing is going to be done. Are we okay with the implementation of Milestone 5? All right. So now that we know all this, Lay, are we okay? Yeah, all right. So now that we have done all this, uh, how do we test this? So because uh, I was actually showing it to, uh, uh, to my class before this that um, I actually ran a test to test everything, make sure everything works, and I couldn't even do it uh, do it completely. And the amount of things that was done was crazy. So uh, if I actually showed it to you, so this is the number of things that you have to enter to test it to see if everything's working. And if you miss one of them, then the test is gonna fail, right? Uh, and I didn't even do any adding any publication or anything like that over here. So this is not complete at all. It just goes through a few things. And anyway, so I wanted uh, and um, and check out and check in things like that. I want it to be set pr and done properly. This is not done, and that's too long of a test to do. So what I will do for the uh, uh, submission. Uh, is this I'm gonna separate this in in pieces so essentially when you are running the the program the program is gonna run like this it comes up and then after it runs uh, I'm gonna tell I'm gonna uh, uh, do it do the submission in parts so uh, test one test two test three so you're gonna have five or six or seven submissions and each submission is gonna focus only on one thing so I'm gonna say adding new publication that's only it that you're gonna do uh, checking the save and load that's the only thing that you're gonna do and it's gonna keep going like that one by one and test it um, to see if everything works prop properly or not and each submission is gonna get a percentage of the mark so if there are five tests or ten tests that I'm gonna go through you're gonna get if it's ten tests each test will gain you 10% of the mark for the for milestone five so like that uh, you can only, uh, if you only successfully completed uh, the save and a load and one and two, then you get, for example, 40% of the mark for the, for the milestone. Uh, and that's how it's going to be. Of course, it has to compile successfully. That's number one. Um, so milestone two that is running, that's that one. And each section that you're adding to it, that's the part that you're going to get the the mark for it and we'll see how it's going to work out so do we understand how sub and that that takes a while so um, I'm going to do the submissions one by one and when everything's ready you're going to see how many different tests we're going to have to make sure everything works and you can uh, go step by step by that but I'll try to uh, have this uh, uh, the tests done in the sequence that I asked you to do these things so when I'm every single method that is being set, the save method, the load method, I'm going to have a tester written for those. And we're going to go through it like that and see how everything works out. Uh, are we okay with the type of the test? 
like this you don't have to enter 200 things and if you miss one of them then you have to start from the beginning so you're gonna have five six different things to enter and only one aspect is tested and it goes to the next one and and uh, done and done I may do an automated submission for the end and give like five ten percent five percent for it so something that you don't have to do an entry and I'm gonna redirect the entry of a file into the executable to test everything as one shot uh, and give some uh, percentage to that one too and uh, um, we'll, we'll see what happens okay uh, so that's that um, any questions before we continue we, before we end the class and the uh, overview session any questions few people are not replying Kai is not replying Mohammed is not replying all right okay thank you very much uh, it was an amazing semester and I hope uh, everybody passes the subject with an A plus um, have yourself a wonderful day and uh, if you have no questions this is gonna be the last session for the semester that I'll be lecturing of any kind any questions activate your microphone no questions hello professor yes so for the uh, final test uh, you have specified that we have uh, focusing on the latest material yes so which are the latest material like after the break no latest mean latest yeah after the break focus okay. is going to be on what obviously I'm gonna use like I cannot say I'm not gonna use member functions because we we studied it at the beginning of the semester so the focus has got to be on the latest stuff that we have that emphasis is going to be on the latest but everything throughout the semester will be tested yes thank you professor. no problem but that was a test and it's my test for section a and b and c and that has nothing to do with the other classes so if you're watching this and you're not from this you ask about your final test from your own professor not me all right Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, have yourself a wonderful, wonderful day. Have a good one, Ferdad. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, everyone. Thanks, Ferdad. See you next Bye. semester. Bye-bye. Thank you, Professor. No problem. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Professor. No problem.